So my name's Alison Tarrant, I'm the Chief Executive Officer of the School Library Association and I'm really pleased to be launching this new series of videos called our Top 5 Tips and they will guide you through all, anything to do with uh, school libraries, reading, research, information literacy, that sort of stuff. So the idea is they're quite relaxed and informal uh, but um, they should just give you a few helpful hints. And I'm really pleased to be doing the first one, which is on creating an engaging library space. So the first thing is, when you're looking at the space, you really need to think about what its purpose is. So you need to make sure that what the furniture and what the atmosphere is trying to do matches with the activities that you're going to be doing in it. So um, you need to be thinking about whether there is um, enough seats, if you're going to be doing paired reading, seats that can be moved around and put together. If the focus is going to be on group work, you need to make sure that the furniture matches that aim. And if one of the prime things that you're going to be doing is storytelling sessions, then maybe you need to think about how much of the space is clear so that that space is just ready to use, maybe with a focal piece of furniture to highlight that that's its primary purpose. The second thing I'd encourage you to think about is lighting. Some school libraries can have quite commercial lighting in, which can create quite a glare off the book and actually make reading harder, uh, which is not what a school library is wanting to do. So where you can make it soft, break it down, see if you can get lamps in, natural light is always a really positive thing. And the third thing I'd encourage you to look at is the shelving. Some shelving can be very, very attractive, but actually in practice is really, really not fit for use. And it all depends on how you can maximise your book stock. And there might be feature shelving, which can do that quite nicely. But also, is that something that you could just do with creating a bit of space and moving the books around? Um, shelving can be very expensive and it's a core part of the library, it's going to be there for a long time so you need to make sure it gives you that flexibility and adaptability going forwards. Obviously there are key decisions about shelving, um, height, width, whether they can move or not, if you've got shelves on wheels and how often are you actually going to be moving those because uh, sometimes the, the cost of those additions uh, can make it actually not worth it in the long run. So the fourth thing I'd encourage you to think about are the books. If you're going to create an engaging library space you need to make sure that your book stock is really reflecting that as well. So your book stock needs to be engaging and easily browsable um, and, and that means going through it, that means doing a stock take, that means weeding we have had stories about school libraries that have had books in from the 1970s. Children today are so used to having things visually appealing. If your book stock looks old and tatty, they will not engage with it in the same way. And I know that in some schools there's a real concern because you don't have the budget to replace. But what I would say is that in that context, less is more. You are better off having a fewer high quality books than you are having lots and lots of old, tatty, out of date books. And resources, you know, you don't want magazines that are, have been around for five years or more particularly at the moment but those are things that will just very easily put children off and I would also say put off staff you know if you get a new head teacher and they walk into the school library and they look around and they're seeing really old copies of books or series that they know are out of date that will give them an instant first impression of the school library and that's probably not what you want it can be really hard to see these things when you're around them every day so I would recommend pairing up with someone from your like local community, your local network, get them to come into your school, you go into their school and you can both see things with fresh eyes because that just doesn't happen when we live and breathe it every day. And my last top tip is about objects and displays. So school libraries, if they are going to be engaging to everyone, which is what we want, they can't just be about books. For children who are not natural readers, to walk into a room which is stacked full of books 
can be really, really overwhelming. Um, browsing is a learnt skill and if children aren't being taken to bookshops they may not know how to do that. So we need to be really specific about talking them through the process of how you can choose a book, of how you browse, what are the factors in your decision. But still that whole wall of books can be really intimidating. So break it down, make sure that you've got little piles of books or boxes of books in other places. I would always recommend breaking up the stock with having objects in there, whether it's a Rubik's Cube or a globe, or they can be related to the different topics or just an in interesting object that maybe, you know, maybe they wouldn't normally see it. So, so important to have books facing out. You know, a lot of time and money are spent on creating these beautiful covers um, and we hide them. And again, out of necessity a lot of the time. But see if you can just create that space. Take four books off, put them, you know, somewhere else, lend them to a classroom. Create yourself a bit of space so that you can just make a couple of books cover on. It will do absolute wonders, I promise you. And displays. Obviously, a lot of time and money is going into these displays and they are absolutely brilliant. And make sure that they are regularly changed. We want to see fresh displays. Again, children's attention spans quite short. You need to keep the library fresh and engaging. So things change. If you can do it every half term, that would be lovely. Um, maybe smaller displays more often and this is an area where you can really utilise your pupil library helpers they will take a lot of pride in it and they will encourage other children to feel that pride in the library as well and to make it even more of an engaging space so those were my top five tips about creating an engaging library space i hope you found them helpful there's lots more information on the school library association website and you can also follow us on twitter instagram linkedin and facebook Thank you very much.